Russia uses forcibly mobilized soldiers from occupied Ukraine as cannon fodder. Ukrainian soldier servicemen from the 95th Detached Air Assault Brigade reported that Russia is forcibly mobilizing Ukrainian citizens in the temporarily occupied territories and sending them into battle as cannon fodder. He shared this information on Espresso TV. The situation in the Toretsk direction is very complex. The Russian forces have been conducting intense assault operations for over a week now. They are moving in large infantry groups without using armor, understanding that their vehicles would be immediately destroyed by Ukrainian artillery. The Russian forces continue trying to break through to the town of Toretsk. Currently, only the resilience of the personnel and the professionalism of Ukrainian commanders are holding the Russian army back in the Toretsk direction. Russia has numerical superiority in personnel, artillery assets and air superiority, Stanislav explained. According to the serviceman, the Russian forces have amassed substantial reserves on the Toretsk front for active combat operations. The Russian army is constantly storming. All combat actions on the Toretsk front resemble a continuous assault. The Russian troops exploit their numerical advantage in personnel to attempt to advance from all directions. However, the losses among them are significant, indicating that Russia has accumulated considerable reserves on the Toretsk front. The Russian forces have concentrated military industrial complexes previously established there, and according to intelligence data, many forcibly mobilized Ukrainian citizens from temporarily occupied territories, including Donetsk. They are using these forcibly mobilized individuals as cannon fodder, he added. On May the 6th, Ivan Fedorov, head of the Zaporizhia Regional Military Administration, stated that Russia's official plans include mobilizing more than 150,000 people from the temporarily occupied territories of Zaporizhia region for the war against Ukraine. He mentioned that drafting for the occupied areas of Zaporizhia has commenced, with the enemy setting up necessary infrastructure at each enterprise. Military commissariats conscription points and conscription desks for maintaining military records. If we go by what Russians officially publish, they'll need to call up over 150,000 residents. We know there aren't many mobilization resources left in the temporarily occupied territories because half of our population has fled. However, it's important to note that the enemy has also brought a large number of people to areas like Berdyansk, Melitopol and Enahoda who could serve as additional mobilization resources, Fedorov explained. Strong fire occurred in a remote area of North Dakota after rail cars carrying hazardous material derailed and burst into flames Friday. Officials said there were no casualties during the incident and the threat to those living nearby appeared to be minimal. Emergency Management Director Foster County Andrew Kirking said 29 cars of the train carrying anhydrous ammonia, sulfur and methanol, derailed around 3.45 a.m. in an area surrounded by farmland about 225 kilometers northwest of Fargo. The cause of derailment is unknown, Kirking said, stressing that the engineer and conductor got away safely. According to Bill Seuss, Spill Investigation Program Manager, the ammonia was the biggest risk, but wind was carrying the smoke away from the nearby town of Bordelac, which has about 20 residents. Wind has been in our favor on this, Sue said, adding that risk has greatly subsided. Still there, as long as fires are burning. Currently, the authorities do not plan to evacuate nearby residents, he noted. Video posted on the social platform X showed the blaze burning intensely. It was still burning as of midday Friday. CPKC Rail Network Company said in a statement that it has initiated its emergency response plan and launched a comprehensive, coordinated response.